Hey there friends, this is Misty with Gleespin Designs. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. And as always, if you are new here, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to say hi. And if you've been here before, welcome back. For today's video, I have 11 high-end home decor DIYs for you all, and I'm super excited for these because they are so easy, but yet come out so high-end looking, and there's so many different home decor styles as well. So let's get crafting with DIY number one. For this DIY, I'm going to be using one of these shadow box decor pieces from Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the back and they can come off very, very easily. You just pop out the little tabs right here and then you can kind of remove the back. But they do have this inner part right here as well. So you're just going to remove that piece and then you can remove the glass. Once you remove the glass, you want to find the side that has the ink or I don't know if it's paint or what it is, but you're going to want to use some nail polish remover or acetone to just very, very easily wipe this off. I've seen and heard of so many different things that people can use, but this works absolutely perfect for me. For the background, I'm going to be using one of these craft papers from this Spring Market craft paper pack that I got off of Amazon. These are all also stickers on the back, so you get all of these as well. I used one of these papers in a recent DIY and I had so many people ask what paper pack this was from, so here you go. I am absolutely obsessed with the designs on these papers. I do not like the fact that there is a different design on each side because then you kind of have to cut into a pretty design like this with all of the names of the flowers if you want to use a design on the other side. You could also just place some like these right into a Dollar Tree frame or on a Dollar Tree sign and you are done. These are adorable to cut apart, place on a tag, again on a sign, and you have a cute and simple DIY. This is definitely one of my favorite paper packs that I have gotten off of Amazon, so I will have it linked down below in the description box for you guys to check out as well. For this DIY, I chose this simple but beautiful leaf print from that paper pack, and I just take the back of the shadow box and I trace out the square of the shadow box right onto that paper, and then I just use my scissors to cut that square out. Using some of my super old and icky gooey mod podge this stuff is like so thick you guys it's so old but i'm trying to use what i have on hand but i'm just going to simply add some mod podge right onto the backing of the shadow box so that i can take that beautiful craft paper and place it right on top make sure that there is no bubbles or any wrinkles and your paper is nice and flat one of the reasons why I chose that paper with the greenery on it is because I felt like they went with these stickers that I found recently at Dollar Tree. They are super, super cute, and I love the little sayings on them, and I also like the fact that they are all three-dimensional. They have, like, little parts that pop out on them, so I just take one and place it right into the center of the backing of the shadow box. Then all you have to do is put your shadow box back together by placing the glass in very carefully. You put the glass in first, then you take that insert, place it in, and then just pop the back on and both the insert and the back will kind of pop in with these little tabs that are on the side. So you just kind of slide them over and then you can pop both of those right into place. And once you have it all put back together, you could use this adorable shadow box all on its own, but I wanted to make a little set, so I'm going to use this house shadow box also from Dollar Tree. Now this one totally got me, you guys. I was stumped for a second, and you'll see why in just one second. So you're going to remove the back, and then here is kind of where the stumping started. I was like, why is the glass not coming out? And then I realized it's hot glued inside. So no problem, right? We'll just use our nail polish remover like we did before, and wipe that ink or whatever it is right off the glass, right? Wrong. So yeah, as you can see, it did not come off. I was like, okay, maybe I need to try on the other side. And then I switched back to that side and I'm like, no, it's on this side, I can feel it. So I'm like, well, maybe I just need to rub harder. And then I'm like, well, no, maybe I need to look closer. And yeah, I'm on the right side. So I was like, screw it. And I just took out my little roller from Dollar Tree and I simply started scraping that wording right off. 
And of course, if you have a scraper, by all means, definitely use that. I, of course, did not have one and went and bought one right after this DIY. I finally found one at Dollar Tree. So I just took my roller blade from Dollar Tree and I just scraped those letters right off. And it literally only took a few minutes to do. It was actually very easy. I even tried Goo Gone on this and so many other things, but whatever, it finally worked and after you have it all scraped off, wipe it out and then I chose this beautiful green check print, also from that paper pack from Amazon and I did the same thing that I did with the first DIY and just traced out the back of the house right onto that paper. Then I just use my scissors to cut out that house shape and when I do shapes like this I like to kind of place it onto the backing to make sure that it fits perfect and if it doesn't then you can kind of cut it down. But then I just go ahead and place some of that icky mod podge right on top like I did with the first one and then place that paper right on top of the backing of the house. Using these Dollar Tree stickers again, I'm just going to place another one. I love this one that says, we call this place our home. It goes perfect with the little house shape. So I place that right into the center and then all you have to do is place that backing right onto the front part of the house and this DIY is done. I think these turned out so pretty and I love how easy they are to make. I am obsessed with easy but gorgeous DIYs and these are definitely one of them. And not only can you use them as a pair, but like I said, you could use them separately as well, like how I did here on this gorgeous spring tiered tray. And if you guys would like to know how I made this large three-tier tray using mostly Dollar Tree items, let me know down in the comments. I would love to know if you guys would like me to put this into a video in a longer and more in-depth tutorial. But either way, our two DIYs look so perfect on that tray. Moving along to DIY number two. For this DIY, you will need one of these really cute new ceramic pitchers from Dollar Tree. And I do love the color, but I wanted to change it so that it goes with our other DIYs. So I'm going to use my Folk Art Spanish Moss paint, and this is my chalk paint. I'm just going to cover up that like tannish peach color on there. And it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line or anything like that. You just want to kind of go up enough to where you have that tan color covered. And you do want to get on the handle as well. Above that tan color on the original mug is a pink strip as well. So I just take my paint pen, I believe this is my Dollar Tree black paint pen, and I just go along around and covering up that pink strip on there. It's very, very light. So basically all you're going to do is make about a quarter inch of a thick line going all the way around the ceramic pitcher and on the handle as well. That black strip is going to be kind of like a background for this jute ribbon that I found at Dollar Tree. I finally found it, you guys. I was super, super excited. So I just take one of those pieces and I'm going to hot glue it going around the entire picture right where that black line or strip on the picture is. So as you can see, I just hot glue it onto the back of the pitcher and place it going over that black strip and hot glue it into place on the back. And I also do a little tiny strip going around the black strip that is also on the handle as well. Super quick, super simple, but absolutely gorgeous. You could just place this right onto a little tray. I made this tray in a previous DIY video. It was a favorite of so many, so if you'd like to check that out, I will have that up in the right hand corner. Not only does that little pitcher look so cute sitting on a little tiered tray all by itself, or you could add florals, greenery, whatever you would like, and it's going to look just as gorgeous. And now on to DIY number three. For this DIY, I'm going to be using two different size plastic bowls from Dollar Tree. If you can find glass bowls, you could definitely use those as well. I loved how this had this perfect little detail down at the bottom of the smaller one. And this large plastic bowl, I've honestly never seen one this big and in this style before. So it might possibly be something new at Dollar Tree as well. So all I'm going to do is use my Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks and add some hot glue onto the smaller bowl, then place the second larger bowl right on top. Once the glue has dried, you have this large decorative bowl with this really pretty detail down here at the bottom. But again, I want to make this in a set of two. So I'm going to use this two set of bowls from Dollar Tree. It 
you get both of them for $1.25. So you definitely cannot beat that. So I'm just going to, again, add some hot glue to the bottom of the smaller bowl and then take it and place it right on top of the other bowl. And again, like I said, you get both of these bowls for $1.25. And once the glue has dried, you have a smaller decorative bowl, just like the larger previous one that we just made. I wanted mine to have a white matte finish, so I use this Krylon Chalky Classic White spray paint, and I spray paint both of the decorative bowls. You definitely could hand paint these as well, but again, look at that detail down at the bottom. I feel like it just gives it such a high-end vibe. But you know me, and I have to jazz these up even more, so I'm going to use some of this Dollar Tree faux leather in the color black. I totally understand why everyone loves this leather. It is great quality, and you get quite a bit for $1.25. So I'm just going to take a long old roller yardstick from my fiance, and I'm just going to kind of measure out a long one inch strip and then cut that out. Once I have the leather strip cut out, I'm just going to wrap it right around where I glued those two bowls together and then hot glue it right into place, kind of hot gluing it to each other. I am already loving the look of this. I think that black leather gives it such a high end look and you could leave it just like this if you would like. I did the same exact thing with the smaller decorative bowl as well and I just cut off a strip of leather, wrapped it around where I glued the two bowls together and then hot glued it into place. Once you have the leather wrapped around both of the decorative bowls, you could, like I said, leave it just like that because they are gorgeous with just the leather wrapped around. But again, you know me and I have to go another step further and I bust out the Dollar Tree Jute Twine again and this is the Jute Twine ribbon actually. And I just hot glue a strip kind of going around the center of the leather strip and hot glue it into place. Once you have it all done, look how gorgeous this turned out. I think these are so pretty. And of course, I did the same exact thing with the smaller decorative bowl. And I wrapped a piece of that ribbon going around. And I did use a different style of ribbon for the smaller bowl. Now, before I show you guys the final look of these bowls, I want to show you a super easy and inexpensive bowl filler idea with DIY number four. For this DIY, you will need some of these jute balls from Dollar Tree. They are in the beach section, and as you can see on the screen, they are so expensive everywhere else. 20 something dollars for just one of them, or $200 for three different sizes of these knot balls. And you could go to Dollar Tree and pick up several of them, cut off the hanger, and you have gorgeous bowl filler. You could also do so many different things with these bowls. You could add succulents into them. You could add florals into them. You could add, like I showed here, decorative balls, which I like to add other decorative balls to those knot balls, but you can also just use the knot balls all on their own because like I said, look at them online and you will be amazed by how expensive they truly are. And now on to DIY number five. Keeping with the Dollar Tree bowl theme, I'm going to use two glass bowls from Dollar Tree. And I love the fact that this colored glass bowl, the bottom isn't completely rounded off like the other bowl is. And that just makes it fit perfect together. And you'll see here in a second. But I just add some Gorilla Glue hot glue to the top of the bottom of one of the bowls and then glue the other bowl right on top. And you see how that bottom of the bowl really fits right inside the other bowl. I I mean, it just makes it look so perfect and like one piece. For the wax, I melted down two full Dollar Tree candles and a half of an old one that I had. I fished out the wicks so that I had three wicks and then you could add in any essential oils that you would like. I also used that Krylon white chalk paint spray paint to spray paint these bowls as well. Using the wicks that you fished out of the Dollar Tree candles, you're going to want to make sure that they are completely dry. They only take a few seconds to dry, so it is no problem at all. Then you just take a little bit of hot glue, add it to the bottom of that little metal piece down at the bottom of your wick, and then you're just going to hot glue it right inside the bottom of your bowl. As you can see, I chose to do three wicks. You could do more or less if you would like. 
To keep the wicks in place and standing up straight, I just use a Dollar Tree skewer stick and some painter's tape. You could use a craft stick or whatever you would like, whatever you have on hand. You just want to basically make sure that they don't move when you pour in the wax. So again, I just tape all three of my wicks to the Dollar Tree skewer stick, making sure that they are standing up straight. When pouring the candle wax into the bowl, the glass on the candle will be very, very hot. So you want to protect your hands when you're doing this. So you're going to pour two full Dollar Tree candles. Again, I use the third one just for the wick. So again, you only need two Dollar Tree candles to fill this up. Give your candle a little time to harden and dry. Then you can just come back in and cut down your wicks and you have this absolutely gorgeous high-end candle. Here's how this candle turned out before I lit it and I have to say as simple as this is it is definitely one of my top favorite candles that I have done. I think it is just so gorgeous and high end looking for gluing two Dollar Tree bowls together and spray painting them. I absolutely love how this DIY turned out. Speaking of quick and easy DIYs, let's move on to DIY number six. For this DIY, I'm going to be using this huge bowl that I found at Dollar Tree not too long ago. It was actually in my Dollar Tree haul video. And as soon as I seen the detail on it, I instantly thought of hammered copper. And I mean, how perfect is that? So I ran and got some of this Krylon metallic copper spray paint and I spray painted this bowl and you guys look at how gorgeous this DIY turned out. Not only is it super quick, super easy, and super inexpensive, it is an absolutely gorgeous statement piece for any type of home decor style. And next we have DIY number seven. For this DIY, you will need two Dollar Tree canvases. It does not matter if they are the white canvases or the black canvases, you just need two of the same size. Using my little handy dandy roller blade from Dollar Tree, you could also use a box cutter if you would like. I just go ahead and roll along all four of the sides going along the staples. Then just start ripping off those pieces that are around the staples and remove the canvas from the frame. Once the canvas is removed, you're also going to want to remove the staples that are going around the canvas frame. So you definitely want to use a staple remover. I am not doing this very safely, so I don't recommend how I'm doing it, but I know there is a lot of safe ways to remove the staples, so definitely stay safe, you guys. Once you have all the staples removed, you're going to want to repeat the same process on the other canvas as well, so that you have two of the canvas frames. A lot of Dollar Tree canvases are different, so some of the corners might be stapled together and some of them might be glued. Using my antiquing wax, I started to kind of stain the canvases using a paper towel, like how you would normally stain something, but I am a little too impatient for that, so, and it was kind of hard to also get in the corners as well with the, with the paper towel. So I decided to just kind of throw out the paper towel and grab a paintbrush and just start kind of painting it on and then wiping it off like you would a normal stain. So then it was a lot easier to kind of get into those corners. Because we had to take out so many of those staples, it does leave little holes in the canvas frame. So again, using that paintbrush really kind of helps get down into those holes as well so that you cover up the entire canvas frame. And once again, you're going to want to do the exact same thing to the other canvas frame, staining it with the antique wax. We need to kind of interlock these canvas frames. So I'm just going to remove the staples on both sides of one corner of the canvas frame. And I chose the one that had the staples instead of the glue because I figured it would be a little bit easier to kind of make it to where it opens up like this. And then you're just going to slide the second canvas right inside and then hot glue the previous canvas back together. And once the hot glue has dried, you can add a little bit of paint so you don't see any of that connecting piece. And then you have two pieces of canvas that are kind of looped together. 
And now what you're going to want to do is kind of take them and form them into an X. And if you kind of flip them up, it's a lot easier to add a little bit of hot glue right in the center of one of the canvases and then place the center of the other canvas right where you added that hot glue. And then you will do the same thing to the other side as well and let it dry. To go with the hammered copper look, I also found these hanging jars from Dollar Tree. They are in the beach section and I went ahead and removed those metal hangers right off the top of the jars. I used that same metallic copper spray paint and spray painted the glass jars and then spray painted the metal hangers with a matte black spray paint as well. I wanted to add more black detail to these jars so I'm going to use two small strips of this Dollar Tree faux leather and I just cut them into little teeny tiny strips big enough to fit down here at the bottom of these jars and then I just hot glued them going around the bottom of each of those jars. Once you have both of the leather strips on, I'm loving the look so far. That faux leather with the hammered copper look is absolutely gorgeous. Then all you have to do is put your little hangers back on and place it inside your canvas frame X and you have this very unique, gorgeous, high-end home decor piece. Let me tell you, as unique as this is, it is one of my top favorite DIYs in this video. I am just loving this DIY. I am so obsessed with how it turned out. And if you're not into the copper look, you could add regular mason jars or paint some and then sand off a little bit of the paint like I did with these. Really, this canvas frame idea can go with so many different bases as well. Let's move on to DIY number eight. For this DIY, you will need two packs of this three sets of terracotta pots from Dollar Tree, and I believe they have a larger set and a smaller set of these, but you're going to need the three pack and you're going to paint five out of those six terracotta pots white, and I used my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I also painted down inside the terracotta pots as well, and you could paint these whatever color you would like. Next, you'll need one of these super new macrame photo hangers from Dollar Tree and go ahead and remove the little clothes pins. We are not going to need those. These photo hangers have seven strands on them and we only need five, so I'm going to simply remove the hanger on one side, then remove one of the strands, place the hanger back on, and then do the same thing on the other side so that we have five long strands of that macrame cord. Once you have those two cords removed, you want to make sure your five remaining cords are nice and even. You will also want to make sure that you save those pieces of cord that we took off. Now make sure that your cords are not twisted and they are nice and straight. Take one of your terracotta pots, add some hot glue to the bottom of it, and then glue it right to the top of the knot that is on your macrame cord. Basically, you're just hot gluing that knot right in the center of the bottom of your terracotta pot. Once the knot is glued to the bottom, I pull the macrame pieces going straight up the sides of the terracotta pot so that I know where to add my hot glue so that the pot stands straight up. Add some hot glue going straight up the side of the terracotta pot, then glue the macrame cord right there, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side of the pot as well. And once the hot glue has fully dried, you have this really cute little hanging pot, but we want to secure this just a little bit more. So I'm going to take that string that we took off each of the corners on the macrame piece in the beginning, and I'm just going to untie the knot and we're going to hot glue it going around the pot. These pieces of macrame kind of already have a little frayed end at the bottom to kind of form a tassel like they already previously had. So I'm just going to move those other strands out of the way and then I'm going to add some hot glue right to the center of the terracotta pot underneath the lip. And then I'm going to place that piece of macrame cord, kind of making sure that the tassel part hangs down and then I'm going to wrap it going around the terracotta pot and then hot gluing it into place, cutting it down so that the other piece can be unfrayed and formed into a tassel as well. So basically you're wrapping the cord around the terracotta pot, leaving a little bit hang in the center where you added the hot glue and then you're going to unfray the other piece so that it forms a tassel. Once you have that piece unfrayed, I went ahead and cut it down to size so that it was all the same length and looked really nice. 
For an extra little detail, I'm going to be using a half wood bead from this huge set of half wood beads that I got off of Amazon. I will have a link down in the description box if you guys would like to check these out as well. But I just take the smaller size and add a little dab of hot glue onto the back of it and hot glue it right at the top of where the tassel is on the pot. You could paint or stain your half wood beads if you would like, but I loved the fact that the natural color of it matched the wood in the macrame piece. It just looks so good together. Then you can just move on to placing the other terracotta pots onto the macrame piece by again making sure that your string is not twisted at all, then gluing that knot to the bottom of your pot, and then hot gluing the strings going straight up the sides of your terracotta pot. Once you have both of the sides glued down, you're going to again take that string just like you did with the first one and wrap it around the bottom top part of the terracotta pot, making sure to overlap the strings on the side to make it more secure and then glue it in the center so that you can cut it down, unfray it, and form it into a tassel. And once your tassel is done, you can glue down one of those half wood beads just like you did before. Cut down the tassel so that it is nice and even and it looks beautiful. And then you do the same thing with all of the other pots and here's how this DIY turned out. You guys, I am just over the moon with this DIY. I love, love, love how it turned out. I think it is just so unique and so different, but turned out so pretty. There are so many different things that I truly love about this DIY. The fact that you could put flowers in here, you could change out the florals for each season. This DIY could almost go with just about any home decor style. And you could also add succulents if you would like as well. And don't let me forget to mention that you can use real flowers or real plants in these pots because these terracotta pots do actually have their own drain holes already in them, so you can use this DIY outside. But no matter what way you use it, I am just absolutely obsessed with this DIY. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And now we are on to DIY number 9. For this DIY, I'll be using another super new item at Dollar Tree, and that is this distressed long sign. I'm obsessed with this. I know I've said obsessed probably a million times in this video, but Dollar Tree is coming out with so many new amazing things. I don't necessarily need the star that is at the top of this sign, and we are actually going to be using this sign horizontally and not vertically. So I'm going to cut this off with my Dollar Tree roller blade and I just use my ruler to kind of mark the line where I needed to cut. You could also use a box knife or box cutter for this as well. I'm sure it would probably go a lot faster, but once you go over it a few times, you can kind of just bend the sign back and forth and it will snap right off. Then I just use some sandpaper to make sure that it is all nice and smooth on that edge. And now I'm going to take one of these Dollar Tree wall stickers. I absolutely love this little saying that's on here. So I'm just going to take it and simply place it right kind of close, like really close down at the bottom of the sign. Once you add the sticker to the sign, you can add Mod Podge on top. I took mine outside and did a spray Mod Podge sealer. I will have that link down below in the description box. It is absolutely amazing. For the bead garland that's kind of going across the top of the sign, I'm going to be using some new Dollar Tree wood beads. These are another super new item. And then I'm going to be using this new Dollar Tree, like, cotton and jute twine. It is really, really pretty and they do have it in several colors. And all I'm going to do is just start stringing on those beads. These wood beads come with 125 wood beads in a single pack. And all you have to do is kind of string them on in whatever pattern you would like. I kind of just figured out a pattern where I could use most of the wood beads and I strung them on until it was long enough to go across the top. However, these beads are a very light wood color, so I'm going to create a faux stain by mixing a little bit of apple barrel burnt umber paint into a little bit of water, and then I'm just going to dip the garland of beads into the paint mixture and let it sit there for just a few minutes so that it can kind of soak up a little bit, and I wanted it to literally be like one or two shades darker, so here's the before and after, 
and again I kind of wanted them to still have a natural look and color to them. To attach the garland going across the top of the sign, I just hot glue the twine back in the back of the sign up at the top of each of the corners and then I add a little piece of craft stick to kind of really make it nice and secure and then all you have to do is cut off the excess twine and you can move on to the next step. I want this sign not only to be gorgeous, but also be functional if you would like. You could hang keys or whatever you would like on it. So I'm going to be using these Simply Blessed wall hooks from Dollar Tree. And I just use a knife. You could use a scraper or whatever you would like to kind of pop off that white detail that's on the front of them. And then once you have all three of the white detail off of the front of those three little Simply Blessed wall hooks, you can just hot glue it right to the back of the sign and what is kind of cool about this is you don't actually have to put a hanger now on the sign because well you have three of them if you would like to use them so you could just add two nails into the wall and use the two that are on the ends or one nail in the center and hang it up just like this I don't know if any of you guys watch Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home, but I am crushing on this DIY. She always says that and now I totally know what she means. And the fact that you do not have to do any distressing to wood and it literally looks like that already is just amazing on its own. Let me know what you guys think about this DIY in the comments down below and I would love to also know what DIY is your favorite at the end of the video. And now on to DIY number 10. This is another super easy and simple DIY. All you have to do is use one of these wood trays from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use my black chalk paint and I'm going to paint the sides on the inside and the outside of the wood tray. So basically I'm painting everything except for the bottoms of the tray. And the reason why you don't have to worry about painting the bottom of the tray is because we're going to be using one of these Dollar Tree wall tile stickers. And I love this copper color and it went perfect with many of our DIYs in this video. So I decided to trace out the bottom of the tray onto the wall tile. And then I just simply used my scissors to cut that out so we could place it into the bottom of our tray. Because this is a wall tile, it is actually super, super sticky on the back, so you don't necessarily need any glue. So all you have to do is pop that right into the bottom of the tray, and you have this gorgeous, high-end looking little tray. I think this DIY turned out so cute, and again, it was super simple and easy to make, and you have a high-end little tray that you could use for your home decor. But for me personally, I actually like to prop them up and actually use them as a different type of decor piece. I think they look so cute this way, and you can really see that copper detail inside of the tray. And just like with the other ones, they all look so amazing together. And now we're on to DIY number 11. This is another easy DIY that is so unique but turned out so beautiful I just had to share it. You will need three bags of these bamboo rings from Dollar Tree and you will separate them by size. They come with two different sizes, one larger and one smaller. Using my black chalk paint, I go ahead and paint all three of the large bamboo rings as well as all three of the smaller bamboo rings with the black chalk paint. Once all the rings have dried, I'm going to start with the larger ones and you're just going to take them and place them basically in the center of each one of them. It's kind of easier to see than to explain, but you're just going to kind of form this ball here by placing them inside each other. And then you will do the exact same thing with these smaller hoops and I do want to show you that you can hot glue them together but you don't necessarily have to because they do fit really snug inside of one another. So but you can hot glue it and then just kind of roll it into the hot glue and get it into place and you have this really cool unique home decor. And here's a better look at how this DIY turned out. I think these are just so neat. I love how they turned out. And of course, they also go with all of our other DIYs as well. 
You could find these in a high-end home decor store or online and they are always so expensive so I always try to figure out a way to make things like that using Dollar Tree items and I think these turned out absolutely amazing. As always, I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. And if you enjoyed the content you've seen here today, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And if you'd like to be notified when I post new uploads, hit the subscribe and the bell notification. And YouTube should notify you when I post a new upload. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Have a blessed day. Bye!